The quotient rule is another of our derivative rules that helps us differentiate when we have functions that contain fractions or uh, one function divided by another function. Now the quotient rule is not one of our basic derivative rules because it's not what we would intuitively guess uh, of what would be the derivative. If you had one function divided by another function, you might anticipate that you could just differentiate the top and differentiate the bottom, similar to like the sum and difference rule where you could just differentiate the first function and the second and then add the results together. That is not the case with fractions. You actually have to go through somewhat of a lengthy process to actually find the derivative of the quotient of two functions. Now you can actually derive the quotient rule pretty quickly uh, and easily, but you have to know the product rule, which you likely have already seen, but you also have to know another rule called the chain rule. Um, not that this is imperative that you remember every detail, but just to, to give some motivation for where in the world this came from, if you had the derivative of f over g and you wrote it as a product, you would say f times g raised to the negative 1 since it was in the denominator, then you're really just taking the derivative of a product instead of a quotient. So the derivative of this product would be, from the product rule, derivative of the first times the second plus the first so I'm going to leave the plus sign off for a second. The first times the derivative of the second. So this would, would bring the negative 1 down, g to the negative 2, and then by the chain rule, which hopefully we've seen that by this point, otherwise you can watch the video on it, the derivative of the inside would be g prime. Now from there it's just a matter of cleaning it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to forego the algebra, but you can kind of see where some of these elements are coming from. Um, the g squared would be in the denominator because of its negative exponent. This would be g to the first in the denominator because of its negative exponent. You would get a common denominator of g squared. And I am leaving out a, a lot of details here. But um, what you would wind up with would be f prime times g to the first. This extra g is due to getting that common denominator from the first expression, minus, then you'd have f times g prime, because that g to the negative 2 is now in the denominator. So we can see that this turns out to be what we know as the quotient rule. So it didn't just come out of thin air. Uh, it was actually derived using other known rules. Now, uh, students usually get intimidated when they see this quotient rule because it's it's pretty lengthy and it, it seems like it'd be difficult to memorize for a test or uh, for the homework or something like that because it's much longer than the product rule or the chain rule or the, you know, the easier um, power rule or some indifference rule. Um, um, most calculus instructors though use this little trick, this little sing song to, uh, to remember. It's a little corny, it's a little cheesy and I'm not too big of a fan of cheesy but this is one time that it, it just works. It, it just really helps. It's a little phrase that goes like this. I say low d high and I'll explain what these mean in a second. Less high d low and then there's a lengthy version to the end or a short version. You could say low d high less high d low and down below denominator squared must go. That kind of finishes the song off. Um, or the short version is low d high less high d low o low squared. That's the, the short version. Now what on earth does, does that mean exactly? Well, um, let me draw a little arrows here. When you say low, I, I'm literally talking about like its position, the, the denominator, the g function. Uh, when I say D, I mean derivative, and when I say high, I'm referring to F. Um, less, I'm referring to minus, and that should about do it. Um, so let's, let's read this slowly. Low D high, low D high, that's low D high. So when you say D high, I'm referring to the derivative of F. Right, so low D high, less less, that's minus, and then high, that's f of x, d low, d low, derivative of the denominator, that's g prime. Now you could say uh, low d high less high d low and down below denominator squared must go, in other words over g squared. 
Um, or we can just use this condensed version O, which simply stands for over. Let me scroll down in case my picture and picture is in the way. Um, over the denominator squared is obvious. Okay, so remember that little phrase and you'll remember the quotient rule. And usually students say that as they're doing it. For that matter, most instructors say that as they're doing it. So let's let's try this with a simple example here. Here's f. There's no other good rule that really fits for the derivative for this function, but that um, big glaring fraction is staring at us, so it's pretty clear this is going to be the quotient rule. So you'd have f prime of x equals, and let's just say that phrase again, low, so just copy the denominator, d high would be 2x, less high, that's x squared, and then d low would be 5, o low squared. So we we'll take the whole denominator squared. Now we should clean this up a little bit. We have 10x squared plus 2x if you distribute here. 10x squared plus 2x minus 5x squared divided by 5x plus 1 quantity squared. And that will clean up just a little bit more. 10x squared minus 5x squared uh, would be 5x squared plus 2x divided by the quantity 5x plus 1 quantity squared. So that would be the derivative of f. And this function tells you the slope of f of x at any given x value. This is a very direct application of the, of the quotient rule. And our last example is going to be to differentiate the sin, uh, tangent function. Now at first glance you look at that and you say, well Devin, that's not the quotient rule. I don't see any fractions here. Well, when, when we think through our basic trig derivatives, the only basic trig derivatives we covered in the first video was sine and cosine. So I know the derivative for sine is cosine x and the derivative for cosine is negative sine x. So I, I recall those, but I, I never recall learning tangent unless you watch the video on specifically trig derivatives. But, um, but we notice that tangent can be written as sine x divided by cosine x. So I can take its derivative because I know the derivatives for sine and cosine and this is a quotient. So let's just take it slow. The derivative of tangent would be low uh, d high derivative of sine would be cosine less high and then d low would be negative sine x so I have a sine x and I'll take that extra negative and turn this minus into a positive um, o low squared so cosine squared x now something that should jump out to us and we should all be fairly proficient at our trig identities they help so much in calculus um, if you had a pre-cal instructor that just said, oh, trig identities are important, or um, you can just use this cheat sheet, uh, don't, don't listen to that. It'll, it'll um, wind up hurting you when you take Calc 1, 2, and 3. Go back and review some of your basic trig identities. They'll, they'll really help you. Um, even though you're not explicitly tested on them in Calc 1, um, they just help so much. Um, if you know your trig identities, this should just jump out to you as cosine squared plus sine squared which we know is 1. There's a trig identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Divided by cosine squared x. And there's another name for that. 1 over cosine is secant. So this would be secant squared x. So we just picked up a new trig derivative. The derivative for tangent is secant squared. So that's one we can commit to memory. Now I, I just want to say one last thing before we close. Um, sometimes after students learn the quotient rule they get a little trigger happy and want to use the quotient rule on everything under the sun that has a fraction in it. Um, so just a couple of examples where you wouldn't use the quotient rule. I'll just make this up here. 
5x to the fourth minus 6x cubed um, plus x squared divided by x squared. Technically, you could use the quotient rule here. It's not incorrect to use the quotient rule, but let's always try to look for easier ways uh, out if possible. And so being that this is a monomial, a common technique we can use is to break this up into three separate terms. So this would lead to 5x squared minus 6x plus 1. That's still f. I have not differentiated. That would make it much easier to differentiate, though. We'd have 10x from the power rule minus 6, and we're done. So just be careful you don't use the quotient rule in certain situations that it's a, a bit overkill.